Okay. Now, in international trade, in international trade, when the buyer reaches into an agreement with the seller, okay, two contracts will be born. The first contract is known as the contract of sale. Okay, the contract of sale is the one which I'm interested in. In this contract of sale, they will agree, they will agree on price of goods. Okay, they will agree on price of goods, but also they will agree on the method, the method of payment. All right, without forgetting that, they will have to agree on the means of settlement or methods of settlement. All right. Method of settlement plus some other issues that everyone is supposed to fulfill. Okay, but at least uh, these issues here needs to be covered in the sale agreement or the contract of sale. Now we have already discussed the methods of payments. Okay, now we want to discuss how the agreed payment will reach out to the seller or the exporter. And this is all about international settlement. Now, international, international settlement is possible only due to the presence of corresponding banking. Therefore, before we could start getting deeper into international settlement, first we need to understand what do we really mean when we say, or whenever we say, uh, corresponding relationship, okay? Remember, one of the functions of the bank is to ensure what? Is to ensure transfer of funds. This is the key, one of the key function of the bank, to ensure that funds are transferred from one point to another. Now, funds can be transferred domestically, okay? Funds can be transferred domestically, but also funds can be transferred international, right? And remember, we define international trade by saying that it is movement, movement of goods and funds across international borders, okay? Across international borders, okay? This is all about, or oh, this is simple definition of international trade, okay? Now, in, for, you, for the bank to transfer funds, it needs to use this so-called correspondent banking relationship. That is to say, banks need to have some kind of relationship between one another. Therefore, correspondent banking relationship simply means the banking relationship that exists between banks in different countries. In this relationship, okay, in this relationship, banks keep keep accounts for one another. Actually, to be specific here, the type of account that is kept between these banks is the current account. Okay. As for the bankers, you all know that current account is a business account, right? This is a business account that is used to either receive some payments or to make some payments. Now, under the correspondent relationship, banks serve as agents, okay? Banks serve as agents for one another. That is, if Bank A is, let's say, in Tanzania, and Bank B is, let's say, uh, in the US, okay? Then, uh, if they correspond to one another, it means the Tanzanian bank assists the US bank to collect funds, but also to make some payments. Conversely, the US bank assists the Tanzanian bank to do the same, that is, to collect some funds or money, to make payments, etc., etc., right? So this is the basis of correspondent banking relationship. This relationship is too useful to the international trade. I will say without correspondent relationship, it could have been extremely difficult to set up payments. Okay, it would be very, very difficult to settle payments. Now, the challenge may be banks might face is related to either reputation, okay, 
but also uh, when I say reputation, it's like uh, the bank that you're corresponding, you're corresponding with, okay, needs to meet some certain standards, okay, and also uh, it needs to protect or to be free from any kind of issue that might cause reputation risk because uh, if the bank is too risky, there might be uh, some issues when it comes to remitting of funds like a blockage and uh, any other problem that may arise. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now, whenever a bank, okay, for example, a Tanzanian bank, okay, whenever a Tanzanian bank or Ghanaian bank or US bank wants to form a corresponding relationship with another bank. There are some factors, okay, that must be considered for uh, this choice to happen, okay, or for the such relationship to be formed. The first factor, okay, the first factor that must be considered is direction and volume of trade between the two countries, okay. Direction and volume of trade between one country and another. Therefore, uh, I'm sure for bankers, you must have seen that uh, there is a lot of transactions between Tanzania and Japan, also Tanzania and India, as well as China. Okay. Recently, we've been trading also with Turkey. Again, we have uh, relatives, businessmen, etc., in the U.S. and the, in the U.K. Okay. Therefore, Tanzanian banks needs to correspond. Okay, needs to correspond with some banks in these countries in order to facilitate what? In order to facilitate uh, fund transfer or any other business transaction. Okay. Now, correspondent relationship is not for free. Okay, there are some costs. Okay, there are some costs involved. And again, I said earlier, and a corresponding relationship, banks are going to keep money, okay, for one another. That is to say, uh, a Tanzanian bank, if it wants to correspond with a certain bank in China, it means two accounts will be opened, one account in Tanzania and the other account in China. Okay, that is to say, if a Tanzanian bank has an account in China, it has to deposit some money. Now, this money is not, to, it's not supposed to stay there for free. It needs to generate what? It needs to generate income. That is the reason now you have to consider the volume of trade between these countries. Otherwise, the fund that you're going to deposit in your account abroad is going to be idle. And that is not good for the business of banking. Okay. Uh, second, second factor to be considered here is political affinity between these countries all right don't go and open uh, or don't start an, a correspondent relationship in a country that has some political problems with yours okay because you don't know what's, what's going to happen tomorrow all right for example two countries have been into some kind of war all right like what's happening right now uh, between ukraine and russia all right so it's very possible for nationalization to happen. Okay, it's very possible that Russia might freeze some assets of any bank that corresponds with the Russian bank. Conversely, it's very possible for Ukraine to freeze assets of any bank that corresponds with any Ukrainian bank. All right. Therefore, if there are some political issues, don't go over inside this kind of uh, relationship. However, if political affinity is good, like there is very good relationship between these countries, then you are safe. You can go over there and establish this kind of relationship without having to worry about anything. So I'm sure again, you must have seen uh, China. Okay. China is trying to have a very good relationship with most of Africa countries. Okay. Why? Because it plays to their advantage in many, many ways. All right, one of which being this uh, facilitation of business transaction. Okay. Uh, number three, reputation of the overseas bank. Okay, in banking business, there are some risk, and one of the risk is called uh, one of the risk is called reputation risk. All 
all right one of the risk is called reputation risk okay reputation risk might occur if a bank or a bank that you're corresponding with okay is engaged in shady business okay or illicit illicit transaction mm -hmm. such as money laundering okay uh, tax evasion etc etc okay those uh, can cause some problems okay between a bank and regulators right and so you do not want that you do not want uh, your bank to be involved with a bank that is into illicit transactions or illicit businesses because uh, you might be uh, an accomplice what to whatever that bank is been doing therefore you have again to consider this reputation of the overseas bank before you start this relationship you need to seek as much information as you can from different sources last last you need to consider fees and charges remember remitting of funds is, is not for free okay fund remittance involve some fees or some charges and in, in most cases these fees or charges are borne by customers okay therefore if it becomes too expensive if it becomes too expensive to remit the funds customer will avoid your bank and they try to look for another solution for example for example they may try to look for another bank where they can easily transfer funds okay without having to incur that much cost therefore try uh, to be sure that indeed the bank that you're going to correspond with won't charge a lot of uh, money in case of these fund transfers All right now as i mentioned correspond correspondent banks or correspondent relationship uh, one of the issues that is be, uh, will be involved is to open or to keep an account for one another. Those accounts are very important for international settlements. That is to say, whenever we want to make a payment, okay, funds will need to come from either of these accounts. Okay? Now, the accounts, bank accounts that are involved in this transaction or in this relationship are mainly the nostril and Vostro account. However, there is another account which is called Loro account. Okay, so there are three, but mostly Nostro and Vostro account are the key accounts in international transaction. Now let's focus a little bit on the Nostro account, and then we're going to skip to Vostro account before we continue with the method of settlement. Now, what is a Nostro account? Nostro is a latin word which means ours okay belong to us nostrum is a latin word for ours therefore when we say nostro account we mean our account with you all right our account with you that is to say the nostro account can be defined as a current account that is maintained by a domestic bank with a foreign bank in foreign currents okay i'll say again nostro account is a current account that is maintained by a domestic bank with a foreign bank in foreign currents uh let me take you back to correspondent relationship okay i say that and a correspondent relationship and a correspondent relationship banks will keep account for one another all right now two banks will be involved in this relationship let's say from tanzania we have crdb bank all right and uh, from let's say swiss we have hbc bank okay now these are two multinational bank now <coughs> if tanzanian bank wants to open an account abroad let's say switzerland with hbc hsbc right with hsbc then in tanzanian perspective this account will be termed as nostro account okay this account will be termed as nostro account that the reason now i define that nostro account is a current account maintained by domestic bank 
in this example here that will be CRD B with a foreign bank HSBC in foreign currency. Since this account will be opened in Switzerland, then the currency, okay, the currency that will be denominated for this account will be the Swiss franc, okay, that the currency that will be de uh, denominated for this account, all right. Now, the inflow of foreign currency in this particular account is credited, while the outflow is debited. Remember, this account will be involved in making payments. Okay, now we're going to do some math about this for you to further comprehend. Here I have a simple illustration. Okay, we have two countries, and this is the international border. Therefore, a uh, Tanzanian executive of, let's say, CRB Bank have fly, just, they just fly, Switzerland okay now over there they pick a certain bank let's say HSBC and decide to open an account okay in this bank all right now the account that will be open at HSBC Switzerland all right is called nostril account all right but who refer this account as nostril account actually the one who refer this account as nostril account is CRDB Okay, the executives of CRDB Tanzania, okay, are the one who refers their account in Switzerland. Okay, their account in Switzerland at HSBC as Nostro account. All right, that's the reason from the definition we say Nostro is a Latin word for R. Right, so it's like the Sierra DB executive saying, Our account with you, who is you? HSBC, our account with you in your currency. What is the domestic currency of Switzerland? It's the Swiss franc. Okay, therefore, this account will operate the Swiss franc. All right, therefore, our account with you in your currency. All right, our account at HSBC in Swiss franc. That's how uh, that's how CRDB refers this account. Conversely, if the executives of HSBC comes to Tanzania and open an account at CRDB in order to to complete now the correspondent relationship, all right? Now, if they come to Tanzania and open an account, okay, at CRDB, so let's assume now, here we have another account, okay, we have another account, which is for HSBC, maintained at CRDB Bank in Tanzania, all right? Now, in Tanzania, the domestic currency is Tanzanian shillings, all right? Therefore, the executive of HSBC will refer the, their account, which is in Tanzania, running the Tanzanian shillings as the nostril account. Okay. So in conclusion, nostril account of your bank, if you are a banker and you are listening to me right now, nostril account of your bank is not in Tanzania. Is not in your domestic country. Nostra account of your bank is abroad. Okay. All right. Vostro account is a return word for yours. Therefore, Vostro points to your account with us. Your account with us. Mm -hmm. Now, that is to say, a Vostro account is a foreign bank account. Please understand this. Vostro account is a foreign bank is a foreign bank account that is maintained at a domestic bank okay that is maintained at domestic bank and it operates domestic currency all right we have a foreign bank Okay, for instance, HSBC, this bank, let's say it, come, uh, it is in South Africa, all right, 
Let's say this bank is in South Africa. Now, HSBC comes to Tanzania and open an account at Sierra DB. Okay, so HS HSBC open an account at Sierra DB Bank, all right, in Tanzania. Therefore, this account will operate Tanzanian shillings. Now, in CRDB's perspective, okay, or let me put it this way, CRDB's executives refers to the CRDB refers the HSBC account that is in this bank as Vostro. Okay. Sierra DB is the one that refers this account as Vostro. I want you guys to fully understand this because somehow it becomes confusing somewhere uh, along the way. I don't want you guys to be confused. Look here. We have this example, Tanzania and Switzerland. Now, a certain bank in Switzerland, call it HSBC, okay, has opened an account in Tanzania, where? At Sierra DB, okay? This account is maintained at Sierra DB. Now, this account is referred by the Swiss as Vostro. Okay, so Swiss refers to their account in Tanzania as Nostro account. Whereas the same account, the same account is being referred by the Tanzanians as Vostro account. That is to say, Sierra DB executives refers to this account as Vostro, but the Swiss or the HSBC's executives refers to the same account as Nostro account. All right, and this account runs or is maintained using the domestic currents. Therefore, the domestic currents of Tanzania is the is the Tanzanian shillings. Let me put this clear so that it won't confuse you, confuse you along the way. Okay. We have two types of account. Nostro account and Vostro account. Over here, Over here, I have a CEO of a certain bank. Let's say TCB. This is the CEO of TCB. Okay. Now, TCB corresponds with a certain bank. Okay. Say again. TCB corresponds with a certain bank in China. All right. Let's assume this Chinese bank is called. Peking Commercial Bank, right? So TCB has a current account at Peking Commercial Bank, okay? TCB current account. Now, this account, this account is referred by the Chinese, okay? This account is referred by the Chinese as Vostro. But the same account, right? The same account is referred by the Tanzanians as Nostro. Same account, this account here, is referred by the Chinese as Vostro and by the Tanzanians 
as nostril. Therefore, if this one here, if this is the CEO of TCB, okay, he refers to his bank's account, current account that is maintained at Peking Bank as the nostril account. Whereas, if we do have another CEO here, the Chinese CEO, okay, the CEO refers to this account as Vostra account. Therefore, this account runs the domestic currency of China and the domestic currency of China is what? The Chinese one. I think to this particular point here, you guys uh, have got the sense of what I'm trying to tell you. Right later, I'm going to give you uh, some evidences of the, these accounts. Now, before we, before we move further, I want to share with you quickly, I want to share with you uh, a certain document here that, uh, that can show you these accounts, okay? I think from one document, I mean from one bank, it will be enough. A moment, please. Now, I believe you guys uh, are able to see my screen. Now, pay attention to this document here. This document is from this bank, Tanzania Commercial Bank, the TCB. All right. Now, it reads, details for customers expecting remittances from abroad in different currencies, all right? So this document is served as a guide, okay, to bankers at TCB. Number one, customer expecting to receive a fund in euro. Now, if we, we have a customer for this bank expecting to receive currency in euro, all right? TCB here is being advised of the bank that they are corresponding with, okay? So the corresponding bank is called Odo BHF Frankfurt. This bank is in German. All right, this bank is in German. Therefore, if a Tanzanian if a Tanzanian wants to remit euros across Eurozone, TCB wants their banker to use the ODD or BHF Frankfurt. Why? Because it is the bank that they are corresponding with. All right. Later, we're going to talk about uh, this Swift code and everything. All right. So here. We have Swift code for the TCB, and again down here we have the Swift code for this German bank. Okay, currents here euro. Okay, it's clearly stated here. Currents euro. You know, I told you, corresponding relationship is expensive, somewhat expensive. You cannot open corresponding relationship in almost every country. Okay, you try to find a bank which is cheaper, convenient, that will stay in the middle and assist to make payments, okay, uh, for your customers all over. For example, this bank in Frankfurt corresponds with TCB, meaning that if TCB want to send some money in Switzerland, France, Spain, etc., still, if the currency involved is Euro, then TCB will remit funds to this particular bank, 
then this bank also we believe or this we believe that this bank correspond with some other banks in Europe. Therefore, it will be easy for this bank to transfer those euros to those countries, for instance, to Spain, to Portugal, or anywhere. That's how it works. Like, you cannot have this corresponding relationship uh, with all banks uh, or with at least one bank in every country throughout the world. It will be too many and too costly. Again here, number two, customer expecting to receive a fund in pound, okay, Great Britain, Pound. Okay. Now, if you want to send some money, okay, currency involved is pound to the UK, then the corresponding bank, the bank that corresponds with TCB, is the Standard Chartered Bank of London. Okay. Standard Chartered Bank of London. This is the one that can assist, or this is the one that correspond with the TCB. So all payments or all, all remittances that involve Euro are done through the Standard Chartered Bank in London. That is to say, most likely, the Standard Chartered also has an account at TCB. Therefore, they direct their bankers to use TCB for payments, all payments in Tanzanian shillings. Likewise, the German bank directs its customers to use TCB for payments in Tanzanian shillings, all right? But as I told you earlier, fee and charges is of paramount importance. You need to consider this as well, okay? Because there are too many banks. Therefore, if, for instance, another Tanzanian bank correspond with the standard chartered and is cheaper than TCB, then most likely, Standard Chartered will channel those payments through the other bank. Let's say Bank XYZ. Now, if payments are to be made in USD, okay, if payments are to be made in USD, then the bank that will be involved here is the Standard Chartered New York. Okay, Standard Chartered. New York. So apparently, this is multinational bank. We have even some chartered in Tanzania. Okay. So this multinational bank, it has some branches uh, in the UK and also I see here in New York. Okay. Again, you see, since they are two in two different geographical locations, you can see even the SWIFT code are different. Okay. They are not the same. So all payments to be made in the USA. Okay, that will involve USD. TCB will use standard chartered to effect payment. Last, if funds are to be remitted to South Africa, okay, South Africa is the country that use what? South African rand, right? Therefore, if funds are to be remitted to South Africa, Again, here, the correspondent bank or a bank that corresponds with the TCB in South Africa is called Standard Bank of South Africa. That is to say now, if a Tanzanian, okay, if a Tanzanian wants to remit some South African rand, okay, let's assume 300,000 South African rand. If this customer has an account with TCB Bank, then TCB Bank will use the Standard Bank of South Africa to make payments to the beneficiary. That's how it works. Okay. Now, uh, let's get back. Let's get back uh, to our slides and continue. And if you didn't know, now you know. So, what is the role of correspondent bank, corresponding banking? For, for example, documentary credits are advised through correspondent bank. Okay. Now, with the correspondent bank, is the one that is required to make some payments. Remember, uh, documentary credit. Okay. If you remember, is that uh, the applicant will be the buyer. All right, 
buyer will open an, uh, will apply for a letter of credit at his bank, which is called the uh, excuse me, which is called the issuing bank. Then the issuing bank will notify the advising bank. The advising bank will further notify the exporter with the beneficiary, and afterwards payments will be made. So that is to say, that is to say, uh, the issue bank debits account of the buyer, the importer, send funds to the exporter through advising bank. So the advising bank needs to have or needs to correspond with the issuing bank for this transaction to go through. All right. Now, <coughs> The, these two banks also are supposed to share information with one another. Uh, issues such as status report, for example, uh, if a Tanzanian customer wants to learn, so, uh, wants to get some information about a certain issue uh, in the UK or in Euro, US, whatever, okay, then this bank can get this information from their correspondent banking which is in those geographical areas okay so information such as status report uh, financial soundness etc can be obtained easily through this kind of relationship all right again the presence of this uh, correspondent banking relationship facilitates issues such as uh, recommendation or guarantee in order to facilitate a certain international transaction deal or uh, business Again, uh, these banks, since they, they are corresponding, they share special technology or links that are used between banks in order to facilitate uh, the safe transfer of funds from their customer or on behalf of their customer. Okay. So they use uh, technologies such as the SWIFT, okay. But also there are some other means such as the MoneyGram, Western Union, etc. that can be used as well. Okay. So remember, with a service such as MoneyGram in the Western Union, uh, in most cases, the customer might not have a bank account. Okay. It's these two kinds of uh, method of transfer does not require the customer to have what? To have a bank account. Okay. So bank can serve as an agent to transfer these funds. Later we're going to have a further discussion on the way MoneyGram and Western Union operates. Now, let's discuss the methods of settlement. Now the first method is now as check. Okay, Check just as in check. Okay, I'm sure everyone of us must have come across a check. Now, check simply means a customer ordering a bank debit his account and credit the beneficiary. That's the check. Right? Therefore, a customer can write a check in favor of a certain beneficiary, let's say an exporter abroad. Now, after writing this check, then the customer is supposed to send this check to the beneficiary. If, for example, the beneficiary is in the same office as the customer, then the, the draw of the check can simply provide or give the check to that particular individual. But if, if the beneficiary is way too far, then this check needs to be sent by other means, for example, uh, through post offices, EMS services, DHL, FedEx, etc. There are a lot of ways that this check can be sent and reach out to the customer, I mean to the beneficiary, right? But check is not, is nowadays not more common in international trade due to some issues, okay? There are a number of issues, I have highlighted a few here, for example, there can be risk of non-payment. Remember, uh, check, as I've just mentioned, is an order, okay? 
order that is issued by a bank customer okay a bank customer for a bank to debit his account for a bank to debit his account and pay the beneficiary all right so the problem here is that it can be possible by the time the beneficiary is presenting this check to his bank uh, to his bank okay during presentation it might happen that the customer's account has no fund all right if the customer's account the one who uh, this is now the drawer okay if the drawer's account has no fund and for some reasons if there was an overdraft it is exhausted it means this check once presented will bounce okay now if it if it bounces, it means payments will be delayed now if it happens that the the that the the company has collapsed for any reason like it has been grabs most likely uh, this check will not be hard therefore there is a risk of non-payment with the check okay again it consumes a lot of time okay before it will be paid time for collection is long for example a customer is in tanzania writing a check to a chinese beneficiary okay so since this check will be sent via these normal ways of sending items abroad okay it might arrive over there late and again a check needs to be cleared okay it's not like if you present the check today you will receive your payment today just imagine this in tanzania okay domestic check takes up to three days okay three working days to be cleared now for international check i think it will be i'm sure it will be more than three days for this check to be cleared all right therefore that also is a problem in international trade because someone wants to get their money as fast so that they can continue with some other issues a check may be stolen or the holder may lost it okay now if they will be able to forge okay if they will be able to forge they might even steal from you like they may go present the check and get them some money i understand like right now there are some precautionary measures some security issues or security check just uh, which are done by the bank just to be sure that uh, indeed the one who has just presented the check is the one who's supposed to be paid but you know scammer is a scammer and every day they develop some new techniques to cheat bankers therefore this is another risk with the bank and the check may be lost or you may it may be stolen again uh, the cost for collection of a check are too high all right therefore check is not preferred to be used by these participants of the international trade then there is bank draft okay also bank draft has some issues uh, as a check and uh, just like a check a bank draft is a document drawn by one bank on another bank okay bank draft a document drawn by one bank okay let's say tcb on another bank let's say nmb or standard chartered bank all right it depends okay so it can be domestic bank or uh, any other bank abroad of course this is kind of old method of payment nowadays uh, it's not prominent like i would say it is obsolete all right therefore just like a checking uh, this method also has some significant shop uh, shortcoming now when an, uh, when the applicants the customer apply for the bank draft he has to mention issues such as the exact amount to be transferred let's say 10000 usd 
the name of the beneficiary if it's a company or an individual for example Mr. Donald Trump okay then name of the drawy bank okay for example Chess Manhattan all right which is in New York and name of the place where the draft is to be paid let's say New York USA all right So right after the draft has been issued, the issuing bank will have to send a notification to the drawee bank, okay? The issuing bank will have to notify the drawee bank that there is a bank draft has been issued. The draft will be given to an applicant or in case of some security issues the issuing bank might choose to send directly the draft to the beneficiary okay so it depends with the arrangement in place okay. now uh, since the draft is it drawn on a bank where the beneficiary probably maintains an account most likely the draft will be paid as soon as it is received okay the draft probably might be paid as soon as it is received however there are some disadvantages with the draft just like a check it can be forged stolen or lost Okay. Therefore, again, draft is not a better way of settlement and therefore right now is not being used as it should. Now, there are two other methods to be discussed here. The first one is called mail transfer, abbreviated as MT. Okay. Again, this one is an outdated technology and uh, the second one is called telegraphic transfer, abbreviated as the TT. Okay. Now, both methods are bank-to-bank -bank transfers, all right? These are bank-to-bank -bank transfers. So, firstly, the customer, the bank customer will be the applicant. He is the one who will instruct his bank to transfer the funds to a certain bank okay so for this instruction to be proper not confusing banks have a special form banks has a special form which the customer will have to fill in all informations all required informations okay he has to be as precisely as possible to avoid mistakes okay therefore the instruction that the customer will provide to the bank actually are uh, in a special form uh, this form is commonly known as the fund transfer form or remittance form it depends with the, how the bank refers this particular form okay but uh, whichever the name in most cases the information that are required are more or less the same okay now <clears throat> as for the mail transfer all right as for the mail transfer what happens here is that the order which contain details of payment will be sent to another bank through an ordinary mail let's say through postal services okay so this poses a risky for this document to be stolen okay it can be stolen or it might be lost but also there can be delay that can explain as to why uh, Mary transfer in these modern days 
is not preferred too much. What about telegraphic transfer? As for the telegraphic transfer, once everything is clear, the order is sent by telex or any other electronic means. Remember the other day we discussed the digitalization of banking services, okay, and also how technology has been assisting banks to operate, to complete the different banking operations, all right? So there are these uh, system, telex, also fax, okay? Therefore, with TT, every bank has its own means that will be used to securely send uh, the information to another bank, to the corresponding bank that is supposed to harm or to act according to the instruction. Again, for security purpose, the order that will be sent, whether by fax, telex, or any other means, all right, must be accompanied with a secret code, okay, the code that will be used for authentication because the corresponding bank needs to be sure that the information or the instruction it, re it is receiving it comes from the uh, from it comes from the bank that it is indeed corresponding with therefore to ensure this or for security purpose there are some authentication codes that are required so that this instruction will be acted upon now there is swift swift is an acronym for society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunication this is very very prominent okay it is being used by many many banks all over the world okay as a matter of fact, if you guys are following what is happening in Ukraine and Russia, okay, following its invasion uh, in Ukraine, Russian banks were sanctioned as well, okay. Following the Russian invasion to Ukraine, Russian banks received some serious sanction, and one of the sanction was Russian banks were barred from using the SWIFT technology okay meaning that russian banks need to find another way of settling payments now you know swift is too fast okay swift is too fast but also secure it is too fast because there are two categories of swift swift one is known as the urgent swift and the other one is known as the ordinary swift okay now, once Russian's bank were withdrawn from, from this system, it means it becomes difficult for settlements to be done by these banks. Like, instead of settlements to be accomplished within seconds or minutes, it might take some hours or even days, depending on the method of settlement that uh, has been used. Okay. Now, <coughs> Agent Swift is also known as the Priority Swift because of its agent that it received during the transmission. If you use this method, funds will, uh, will reach to the beneficiary's account just like that, quickly. Okay. Uh, it's sometimes known as the Express International Money Transfer, whereas the Ordinary Swift is called Non-Priority. Okay, Non-Priority Swift. So it is also now occurred as international money order. Now the last method is the MoneyGram and Western Union money transfer. Okay, I'm sure you guys must have seen this. Okay, they are not new. Now these two methods do not require applicants to have a bank account with you. What will happen actually is that the applicant will visit a bank branch, okay, but it has to be a bank branch that offers this service. I mean, the bank branch that offers MoneyGram service or Western Union money transfer. Okay, you cannot just go to any bank, it does not work that way. So, a customer needs to visit any of the bank that is an agent for MoneyGram or Western Union, 
And over there, the applicant will be given a secret number. So the customer now is supposed to send this secret number to the beneficiary of the fund using his own means. Now it, it can be an email, can be a text message, whatever. Okay. So it is this secret number, okay, it is this secret number that the beneficiary will have to provide to a bank in order to be given the remitted fund. If you will not have the secret number, then no fund will be given to him or her. Well, guys, how now, how settlement is done? How settlement is done? Let's see the, the settlement procedure. As I said earlier, a customer is the one who needs to initiate the transaction. Now, in this case, the settlement transaction. To avoid confusion, to have uniformity, banks have prepared a special form. Okay? Banks have prepared a special form that a customer will have to fill. All right? Therefore, in this form, the customer will fill the exact amount that he needs to be transferred. For example, USD 400,000. Okay? Again, the customer needs to declare currency that must be remitted. All right? So in this case, USD. Again, the customer needs to fill beneficiaries information that is beneficiaries bank account that is to say now the beneficiary needs to provide the customer with his banking account because this is an international transfer let's say it is initiated from tanzania to japan all right therefore the beneficiary needs needs to show or to provide the bank with the I mean, uh, the beneficiary needs to provide a, a Tanzanian customer, importer, with his banking information, okay? So, the Tanzanian customer will fill this information in a special form that will be provided by the bank for this transaction to go through. Again, most likely, the beneficiary will instruct this importer or customer the best way or uh, he expects that funds to be transferred. So therefore, it might be bank draft, might be mail transfer, might be telegraphic transfer, or SWIFT. It depends. But these instructions need to come from the beneficiary. So, beneficiary give this information to a bank customer, let's say an importer, and then an importer will give this information to his banks, let's say TCB, via a special form or NMB via a special form. Okay, so once everything is clear and uh, in this importer account, there is sufficient fund, whether in USD or uh, the equivalents in TZDS, it is then and only then the bank will act upon the given instruction. Okay, now uh, the applicant, the applicant is an importer, for example, who wants to make payments to a certain exporter. So the applicant, the importer, needs to authorize his bank to debit his account. Okay. For example, for example, Freddie has a dollar account at TCB or NMB. All right. And he wants to make a payment of let's say ten thousand to a certain beneficiary in the US. All right. Therefore, Freddie needs to authorize NMB or TCB to debit his account with 10,000 USD or 
Tanzanian shillings equivalent to 10,000 USD. All right. Now, if if Freddie maintains domestic denominated uh, domestic currency denominated account, okay, TZDS, then the bank will have to convert that the rationale or the relevance of knowing exchange rate. Okay. So using that day's exchange rate, okay, the exchange rate between ZDS and USD. So using that day's exchange rate, then the banker will convert Tanzanian shillings into USD. That is to say now, the banker will sell the customer USD for any currency, all right? Afterwards, the banker will select a suitable correspondent bank. I show you in the case of Tanzania Commercial Bank, uh, they have a special form that assists their bankers to tell what bank to use for specific currencies. I showed you this form. Therefore, the banker will have to select the required uh, correspondent bank and afterwards, the transfer will have to go through. Now, what follows next is passing of entries. I understand what happens actually. Uh, this is the case in Tanzania. I'm not sure in Ghana or uh, somewhere else. In most cases, these trans I mean, this, uh, the passing of entries and everything are done by bankers who are at the back office, particularly at the Treasury Department. These are the guys who will do this, uh, will pass these transactions or entries, okay? Therefore, as for a banker who is at the front desk, in most cases, he, will, he or she will simply collect information. After collecting information, they will fax or email this information to their headquarters, to the HQ, to the guys who are at the treasury department for them to do this beautiful work. Now, let's see how transactions are being passed, okay? So what happens is, remember, the customer has authorized the bank to debit his account. So the bank, the bank, let's assume this customer is banking with National Microfinance Bank. Therefore, the bank will debit customer's account. Let's assume this customer is called Freddy. So the bank will debit Freddy's account and what next? After debiting this particular account, then they will credit Nostro Mira account. Okay. Treasurer's department will credit the Mira account of NMB. Why Mira account? Remember, here we want to transfer foreign currency, okay, abroad. And NMB wants to use its account which is abroad to make this payment. Remember, Nostro account is not in Tanzania, it's abroad. So, to match the book of accounts, like we say in every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. Okay, do entry system. I'm sure you guys know this from basic knowledge of home accounting. That's the reason bankers, okay, or bankers at the treasury department credit the Nostro Mira account. Mira to reflect that this particular account is not here, it's somewhere else. Okay, so I expect now this account to be debited on the other side of the transaction. Since also there will be some charges or commission for such a transaction, let's assume maybe for this transaction, the bank will charge 200 uh, USD. Therefore, this 200 USD will be credited in the commission account. Afterwards, informations are sent to the correspondent bank using mail transfer, telegraph transfer, or SWIFT, depending with the instruction. But as I've said, Made transfer 
Mail transfer is no longer being used by many banks. So it could be through telegraphic transfer or through SWIFT. Once this information reach out to the second part, the corresponding bank, then the responding bank, after receiving, first will have to authenticate the payment. Okay? The correspondent bank needs to authenticate payment instruction. Do you remember we saw SWIFT code? Okay, on that form we saw SWIFT code. Therefore, the paying banker, okay, the correspondent bank, needs to be sure that indeed these instructions are legitimate and they are coming from a bank that I uh, correspond with, let's say in Tanzania, all right, and the authorization has been issued. So, <clears throat> after authentication through SWIFT code or any other security check which is in place, then the corresponding bank will have to check if there is sufficient funds in the bank account, okay? Let's assume, as I mentioned before, the instruction comes from National Microfinance Bank, which is in Tanzania, right? To a certain bank in the US. Payment is supposed to be 400,000 USD, okay? This is the amount of payment to be made, okay? Therefore, furthermore, assume that uh, NMB correspond with Chess Manhattan Bank, okay? Commercial Bank. Therefore, Chess Manhattan will have to check if the current account of NMB has sufficient funds to meet, to meet this transaction. And if it does not have sufficient fund, most likely there is an overdraft arrangement. Okay. So if everything is clear, then correspond bank uh, will go ahead passing entries. All right. Which will be, it will debit Nostra account of National Microfinance Bank. Do you remember in Tanzania, Tanzanian banker, the treasurer, they credited Mira account, Nostro Mira account. Why Mira account? Because that account is not in Tanzania. It's just a, ref a reflection of the account which is actually in the U.S. at a certain bank in the U.S. All right. Therefore, in the U.S. now, the bank will debit Nostro account of NMB and credit beneficiary's account. Let's assume here the beneficiary is Mr. Donald Trump. All right. So they will credit Mr. Trump account with the required amount and also they will credit commission account. Now depend with the agreement how much is supposed to be for the commission. Okay. That will be the end of story. Now, if you guys have comprehended each and everything, it is time now we start doing some examples and see how it plays out or how it works out. But before we start with the examples, first of all, I need to show you uh, the form that I'm talking about, okay? The fund transfer form and also uh, the SWIFT advice, all right? Now, let me uh, share this with you. All right, uh, let's start with this commercial invoice. I believe you guys, I believe you see my screen. All right, now let's start with this commercial invoice. Now in this commercial invoice here, there are some important information that I need you guys to note, okay? All right, now here, the deal is between SBT Japan and Freddy. This is commercial invoice, okay? So the deal is between SBT Company Limited Japan, this is Japanese exporter, and Freddy, who is a Tanzanian importer, right? Now, in this invoice, you see here, the exporter has provided Mr. Freddy with his bank information, okay? information that he wants funds to be remitted to that is that is uh, bank name 
MUFG Bank Limited. Bank address is right there. Account name SBT, SBT Company Limited. Swift code for this bank is this one B O T K J P J T. Okay, branch code 251. Branch name Yokohama Ekmai branch. All right. And again, the account number is clearly stated here. All right. Now, <clears throat> here there is instruction for dealing with letter of credit. We recommend that you ask your bank to channel letter of credit directly to our above bank in Japan. So they want, uh, if for example, this customer is going to use your bank to send funds to the beneficiary through MUFG Bank, if the method of payment is letter of credit, then they want the letter of credit to be addressed directly to MUFG Bank Limited in Japan. Okay. Amount in question is stated there. Okay. So this will be supporting document okay, to fund a transfer form that you as a banker will prepare for your customer Freddy to fill in in order to offer appropriate instruction of fund transfer to the Japanese exporter. Okay. Now, let me share with you an example of this form, uh, fund transfer form. This is a fund transfer request form. Okay. Now, if you want to transfer funds through National Microfinance Bank, this is bank. I mean, this is the form that they're gonna give you. Now you're supposed to fill in your informations, all right? Branch name here, you can fill, for example, uh, sorry for this. Okay. Now, branch name, let's say Kisutu, that's the branch name. Here you fill in the dates, okay, here and everything. Now, look over here. If you look over here, you see there are some methods of fund transfer, like TIS, SWIFT, multi-transfer, EFT. Then here, cash check okay and on the right far right side there are some currencies for instance here usd i mean i can say shillings usd euro or pound all right now if freddie wants to tra transfer usd 400,000, it means he has to tick to check the usd box Okay, now method of transfer, SWIFT. So he needs to check SWIFT box. Okay, afterwards, uh, we say the customer, that is Fred now, needs to authorize the banker, NMB, to debit his bank account. Okay, now this is the authorization. Please debit my, oh, my account number now here fred needs to enter his bank account number let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that is his account number account name fred nandi john all right now remember this transaction is not for free there is a fee okay therefore Debit charges from account number, okay? So let's say same account. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Applicants or emitters signature. Now Fred needs to sign here with his signature. Okay. Beneficiary account. Let's say the beneficiary is Mr. Donald Trump. So simply write here, Donald Trump. All right. Beneficiary bank account, 
you will state okay beneficiary branch you state let's say it's in the new york account number x y z blah blah blah, blah. beneficiary address again you state the address and details for payments you state what are the payments for all right therefore for example from uh from the previous commercial invoice that i showed you okay we saw that fred is supposed to pay the japanese okay fred is supposed to pay the japanese exporters okay so beneficiary name will be sbt company limited japan beneficiary bank MUFG okay beneficiary branch it was stated there if you look at the commercial invoice all this information are over there uh, uh, likewise the account number is right there beneficiary address is right there fees for purchasing of a motor vehicle right now here you'll have to fill in the amount which is 400 USD okay both in words and in writings if there is a swift code he needs to fill in remember swift code is provided in the commercial invoice so he has to put the swift code right here okay etc etc last he will submit this form to a banker or a representative of the national microfinance bank therefore the banker will check the accuracy of all these documents and i mean of all this information and afterwards writes his or her names okay and after writing his or her names then he will send it to his superior for an approval that will be it okay therefore after doing this this form now will be sent to the treasury department for the transaction to go through uh, uh this swift advice is from crdb bank okay i'm trying to get information from different banks for you guys to comprehend exactly uh, what's happening in the industry all right so here you can see date and the time okay now what was the type of this swift okay it was normal swift ordinary swift remember we have two types of of swift priority swift and ordinary swift therefore this one was simply an ordinary swift now message input reference number this is the reference number for the message that was sent you remember there's an issue of authentication that is the corresponding bank needs to authenticate that indeed these instructions are coming from a bank in tanzania that they are corresponding with okay therefore this is the uh, information in message input reference okay now who is the sender okay sender is a banker remember nostro and vostro account are banks account no single individual can have this kind of account okay therefore who is the sender sender is the banker crdb bank now you can clearly see here you can clearly see here that crdb admitting to be the sender now crdb bank that is from tanzania who is the receiver now receiver is a city bank in the united states but the funds here funds are supposed to be remitted to japan not usa bank therefore later i'll tell you why funds was remitted from the restaurant to japan through a certain bank in the united states of america okay but as you see funds flow from crdb bank to a certain bank in the u.s called Citibank in the new york okay and last these funds will end up to the beneficiary who is spt japan okay spt japan in your camera so you see all those information that were issued 
in that particular uh, commercial invoice. Those information are clearly written here. Okay. Beneficiary customer name and address is right there. Supportive evidence is invoice. Okay, the commercial invoice needs to be attached as an evidence for this kind of payment. Therefore, the invoice was uh, invoice number this one for purchasing of a motor vehicle. All right, charges USD fifty. Okay, the, uh, this is the charges for this transaction. Okay, now. Who has ordered payment for this? I mean, who has ordered this payment? Payment for the vehicle, okay? The one who ordered payment for the vehicle is clearly stated here. Names, address, and everything, okay? Remember, the bank provide you with a special form. So you fill in your information. So everything is right here. This is the person who has just ordered, and this is his or her bank account number, okay? Amount in question is clearly stated here. Okay, that's and everything is right there. Therefore, this is a swift uh, advice to evidence that indeed fund has been remitted from this particular bank to a certain bank abroad. Okay, for the beneficiary to receive his fund. Okay, now it's one page. Probably it has a lot of information, but everything is fast because of the technology. All right. Now, let me take you back to our slides. Here we have an example. Triple A Limited has imported goods worth South African rand 20,000 from Metro PLC in Durban, South Africa. Triple A has a bank account with Azania Bank, whereas Metro Public Limited Company has its account with Stambik Bank in South Africa. The good news here is that Stambik Bank happens to correspond with Azania Bank. All right. So what you're supposed to do here, you as a banker, you're supposed to pass entries. Okay, pass accounting entries. Now, if you are faced, if you are faced with this kind of question, first of all, you need to be sure, okay? You need to be sure of the currency that's supposed to be remitted. Okay, you need to be sure of the currency that's supposed to be remitted here. So the currency in question is the South African rand. Okay, that is the currency in question. Amount twenty thousand. This one is termed as payment. Payment in home currency. Why payment in home currency? Because South Africa, okay, is the home for this company, Metro. And South Africa uses South African Rand. Okay. South Africa uses the South African Rand are their domestic currents. Therefore, this is termed as payment in home currency. Okay, the home currency of the metro company is the South African rand. Alright. Once you know this, then you as a banker, you're supposed to pass some entries. Okay. It's easy. There will be some entries that will be passed in Tanzania and also some other entries in South Africa. Now, in Tanzania, what's going to happen? What is going to happen is that we are going to convert the South African rand into Tanzanian shillings using the current buying rate. Remember, every single day, you guys announce the exchange rate. Okay? Every single day, you guys are announcing the exchange rate. It goes like, for instance, ZAR equals to here, you write buying rate. And here you write selling rate. Okay, so let's say ZAR 150, 180. Okay, now we need to convert the Tanzanian shillings into rand by using what? 
by using the excuse me here is a mistake okay we need to convert tzs into south african rand okay we need to convert tzs into south african rand using the current selling rate not buying rate it has to be selling rate please make this necessary correction all right we're going to convert the Tanzanian shillings into uh, South African rand using the current selling rate. Now let's assume today's selling rate is 180. Therefore, we are going to debit AAA limited account with Tanzanian shillings equivalent to the South African rand 20,000. That is to say, if, if one rand equals to TZS 180 then 20,000 will equal to how much okay this is gonna be 36 million I mean 3.6 million sorry all right Tandana so therefore we're going to debit this customer's account to pay account with 3.6 million or the 20,000 South African rand. After debiting this, what do we do? We credit a mirror account. Okay, we're going to credit a mirror account of Tanzania Bank. Okay. Now, what is this mirror account? It is no strong. The Nostro account of Azania Bank, sorry, here it's not Stambik, here it's supposed to be Azania Bank. Okay, the Nostro account of Azania Bank is in South Africa. It is being maintained at Stambik Bank. Okay, so Tanzanian bankers, okay, Azania bankers are going to credit their Nostro account, Nostro Mira account. Okay, with what? With 20,000 South African rand. Then, they're going to credit what? They're going to credit um, a mission account. Okay. Remember, this is not for free. So here, they must credit commission account. Let's assume with uh, Tanzania shillings or South African rand, five hundred. Okay. Now in South Africa, what's going to happen? It's simple. Once this information has reached to the corresponding bank in South Africa, they will debit the Nostro account of Azania. Now, this is not this is not going to be mirror account because this is actual account that is maintained at the Stambik Bank in South Africa. Okay, so the entries that I'm showing to you right now actually happens in Stambik Bank in South Africa. Okay. So, officers at Stanley Bank South Africa are going to debit Nostro account of Azania Bank with South African 20,000. Then, they are going to debit, uh, to credit Metro PLC account with the required amount, which is 20. Okay. And also, if there is an issue of permission, then they are going to credit commission account as well. Okay because this is not for fee, so there will be a commission of, let's assume, 20 South African rand. Okay. Now, this is how you pass these entries. Okay. Now, I want to give you an example that will involve three currencies. Okay. Look at this, this one. Triple A Limited has imported some goods with USD 20,000 from Metro PLC in Durban. Okay, remember, in our earlier example, currency used was South African Rand. This time around, goods, the invoice is in foreign currency, the currency which is neither Tanzanian nor South Africa. That is the USD. Okay, therefore, the invoice is in USD. 
Triple A Limited has imported goods worth USD 20,000 from Metropole C in Daman, South Africa. Triple A maintains in a, uh, its account with Azania Bank, while Metro maintains an account with Stambiki Bank. But here there's one piece of information added, that is, both Azania and Stambiki Bank corresponds with Morgan Trust Bank in New York. Okay, both Azania and Stambiki Bank correspond with Morgan Trust in New York. Now you are required to pass these entries. This transaction involves three currencies, okay? I mean, look very well here. Three countries will be involved, okay? Three countries will be involved. Number one, Tanzania, where there is an importer. Number two, South Africa, where there is a beneficiary, exporter. But since transaction has just involved a currency, which is neither the currency of these two countries, then USA will be involved as well. Therefore, here, USA will save, or the US banker will save at the middle. Now, the importer has TZDS, or in Tanzania, the domestic currency is Tanzanian shillings. In South Africa, domestic currency is the South African rand, but the invoice is in USD. So, here, we need to have three banks, okay? One bank in Tanzania, which is Azania. The second bank in South Africa, already mentioned, Stambik. And the middle bank is in New York, okay? That is Morgan Trust, okay? That is to say, there will be some transactions in Tanzania, okay? There are some, will be some transactions that will take place in Tanzania, that is to say, a certain account in Tanzania will be debited and some accounts will be created as well. Likewise, there will be some transactions in the US, okay? There will be some transactions in the US, that is, there is a certain bank account will be debited and another account will be credited. Finally, there will be some other transactions in South Africa where certain accounts will be debited and certain accounts will be credited. Okay. Now, in Tanzania, we are going to debit triple A company. We are going to debit triple A account. We are going to debit triple A account with Tanzanian shillings, okay, with Tanzanian shillings equivalent to USD 20,000, okay. So debit triple A account with USD 20,000 or Tanzanian shillings equivalent to USD 20,000, okay. Once you do so, then what do you credit? You're going to credit Nostro Mira account of what? Of what bank? Of Azania. Okay. You are going to debit to credit the Nostro Mira account of Azania Bank. And again, you're going to credit the commission account. Okay, you're going to credit as well the commission account. Now this information will be sent to USA because the dollars need to be accounted for. Now in the US at Morgan Trust Bank, Morgan Trust Bank will simply debit the nostril account of Azania 
and credit the nostril account the nostril account of Stan Big Bank. Okay. After doing so, the information again is passed to the South African bank, which will debit Nostro its mirror account. Okay. Mirror account of Stambic. Why mirror account? Because the actual Nostro account of Stambic is not in South Africa, it's somewhere else. And in this case, in the US. This account received 20,000 USD. Therefore, you need to debit this account and credit the beneficiary, which is what? Beneficiary is uh, Metro. Metro PLC. So you credit with what? USD 20,000 plus their commission account with the specified amount. Uh, to ensure you guys understand what is going on here, let me come back to that Swift device. Okay, I mean, I want to use the example from the Swift device that I showed you. Okay, uh, remember, remember in that Swift device, remember in that Swift device, ordering customer is Freddy beneficiary SBT Japan okay Freddy ordered this transaction from Sierra DB Bank beneficiary wants to receive funds at his bank which is called MUFG okay in Japan but since the amount in question since the amount in question is in a currency which is neither for Japan nor domestic currency of Tanzania shillings, then we have to involve a third bank, which is what? Citibank in New York. Okay. So what happened is in Tanzania, in Tanzania, we are going to debit Freddy account. We are going to debit Freddy account with Tanzanian shillings equivalent to USD twenty. Excuse me. You are going to debit Freddy with Tanzanian shillings equivalent to those dollars. Okay, and what were the dollars? Ten thousand five hundred. Okay. Then you credit CRDB Nostro, but this is a mirror account because it is not in Tanzania. Nostro account with how much? With 10,500. After doing so, again you credit the commission account. I remember the commission account for this transaction was USD 70,000. Okay. This information is passed to the US bank. Okay. So in USA, in USA, the Citibank is going to debit, the Citibank is going to debit the Nostro actual account. So Nostro account of CRDB. I'm gonna debit USD ten thousand five hundred and the credit MUFG Nostro account. With exactly the same amount. Okay. Again in Japan. In Japan. In Japan, let me change color here. Let me write here. 
in Japan. Okay. We're going to debit M U F G Nostro Mira account. Okay, so you debit from this account USD ten thousand five hundred, and you're gonna credit SBT account with exactly the same amount. Plus, this bank is gonna take commission out of this transaction. So they're gonna create commission account with a certain amount. I don't know how much it is. Let's assume USD twenty for this transaction. So this is a settlement procedure that involves three currencies. Okay. Settlement procedure that involves three. Thank you.